Gracias, profesor. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, thank you, MIS, for having me here again, like everybody else. Uh, thanking you guys for putting this amazing event together. Uh, it's for us super nice to see a young company bringing back the passion for education and for super high-end events back to dentistry. So congratulations. Uh, I want to use my 30 minutes to share with you uh, what we've been doing with technology, but specifically uh, what we do on a treatment planning phase. How we can use this technology to improve the process of making better decisions and incorporating a realistic uh, interdisciplinary dentistry. Now, if my, my laptop is not showing my lecture here, if we could have my lecture here on my laptop, otherwise I will not be able to control uh, my videos. And why do I start with uh, vision? Because on our humble opinion, uh, one of the main problems of interdisciplinary dentistry is not the skills of the team or the knowledge or the scientific background. If we look at our own mistakes, uh, we realize that usually these mistakes are rel related to lack of vision. Lack of vision at the beginning of the process. And this lack of vision means not understanding exactly where do we want to end and what is the relationship or the discrepancy between where we are and where we need to be related to the face. So it's a totally facially driven new way of planning our cases. Vision, lack of vision will impact the quality of the projects that we are offering to our patients and the quality of team communication. Another huge problem in modern dentistry. Realistic daily team communication. So I'm gonna focus on how the beautiful tools of digital dentistry can actually help us not specifically on the clinical part, but on the treatment planning part. Because I believe that from initial documentation all the way to giving a good provisional, the case is solved. This is the core of modern dentistry in our understanding. Interacting with the patient, analyzing the face, documenting the case, designing the smile, treatment planning, combining all the specialties, and creating the strategy to start the process all the way to a functional, aesthetic, biological provisional. Because from that point on, it's just a matter of using technology to transform these projects into final restorations. So technology is completely ready to help us on this adventure. And as I also learned from the amazing technicians that I worked with as a technician is that being a very good treatment planner is most of the times much more complicated than being a good clinician. That is the biggest challenge in dentistry, I believe, knowing how to treatment plan our cases. I believe that technology will impact drastically five specific moments of our work. It's already impacting. Through technology, we become better facial analyzers and we become better smile designer automatically. Through technology, we can integrate the specialties in a predictable way and we can combine procedures, always aiming towards this final goal. Through technology, we can engage the patient, we can motivate the patient, we can educate the patient, and we can increase case acceptance. Through technology, we can produce every single device that we need nowadays in dentistry. Not, there's not even one device that cannot be completely digitally designed and completely digitally fabricated. And finally, one very important concept, through technology, we can do quality control. For us, in an interdisciplinary case, in between steps, we can always bring back the initial project and find out how far off we are and what are the changes that we need to do to finalize the case as close as possible to the initial project. So technology is really ready to impact our work. And it's not about 
digital dentistry against analog dentistry, we know that the basic principles, the fundamentals that we learned 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago are still exactly the same or almost the same. We need to have these principles and we need to enhance these principles with technology. So technology will not make miracles. We need to first become great technicians and great clinicians and then start taking advantage of technology. It is a huge paradigm shift. That's why we see how difficult it is to get away from our comfort zone, to really change, and that's why we see that most of the times when people talk about full digital protocol, we are seeing partial pieces in digital and back and forth into analog because it's hard to change our daily work and technology is usually underutilized in our daily practice. So taking these uh, principles and understanding that even myself as a technician, many things that I used to do nowadays, I'm doing it in a completely different way because of technology. So we need to embrace and be open to this. There's a very simple test that I usually do when I see new things, every time I see new things. And this is based on something that is very important, that we need to find simple solutions. That's why I like, I love MIS, make it simple, because we need to make things simple. We, we know that many times we see new technology and they're not simple. We see beautiful lectures and this is not simple again. So we need to bring things to reality. So I make this question. Every time I think I have a new idea or every time I see a new technology, is this new little thing is making my life easier by making me better, faster, and less expensive? When we combine these three things, yes, this new thing is worth investing time and incorporating in our daily practice. Another thing that we believe in modern dentistry is this, that it's not enough anymore to have a good technician doing good procedures and a good clinician doing good procedures. For example, a good wax up and a good tooth prep. As I learned from Galip Gurel many years ago, the prep needs to be by design. So modern dentistry means that we are not only prepping teeth, we are prepping teeth according to initial project. And it's not only about tooth prep. Every single procedure in somebody's mouth should happen following this principle. Procedures, they need to be linked to each other. Not only prepping teeth, but crown lengthening, placing implants, doing orthognatic surgery, orthodontics, whatever we do, we need to compare this procedure to the initial vision, to the initial facially driven project that we developed. And for me, this picture is a very nice summary of a case that we did I did with Andrea Ricci in Florence showing that after preps, after perio procedures, and after orthodontics, we were able to fit the initial index of the wax up and see that all these three procedures were done by design following this initial project. But to do this in the analog world every single day is almost impossible. And once in a while we are lucky and these are usually the cases that we actually show on lecture. Unfortunately, even because of our egos pretending that this is what happens every single day and we know that reality is very, very different. I believe that only through technology we can make initial projects become reality with the final outcome. And I did a very simple uh, test that I uh, invite you all to do with your own cases. We compared finished cases, we made impressions of the final outcome, and we compared these models with the initial diagnostic wax up that we did six months before, one year before, and we realized how unpredictable we were even though we were working in an amazing team. So this is not acceptable, I believe, in modern dentistry. We need initial projects that make sense with final outcomes, and digital is the only way to do that. So when we have cases that we need crown lengthening, for example, we need to be able to do a digital 3D design that becomes a model, that becomes a guide, that helps the surgeon to perform the procedure following this specifically facially driven initial project. If we have restorations or implants or orthodontics or orthognatic, we need to do the same. We need to start from the face. We need to have a final end in mind and we need to go outside in all the way to the simple molar to see where the implant should be according to this project.
and only after that to realize if there's bone enough to support the implant in this ideal position. And to make the decision of recreating bone to keep this implant position or facilitating the surgery by moving the implant position but understanding exactly the impact of the change of this position all the way with the project that will impact a facially driven project. This is for us modern dentistry. So in the past as a technician was always a huge nightmare to be able to see that an initial project was not becoming a final result and that we had to struggle on every single stage starting from scratch when it comes to facial integration. Nowadays we can create a simple two-dimensional sketch and bring this all the way through mock-ups, provisionals and final restorations with a very huge chance of predictability at the end and this giving us confidence to present in a different way these projects to the patients. So of course always working with monolithic restorations, we're going to mention something about it, but I'm going to use this uh, case to exemplify quickly our brainstorm, our, our initial brainstorm utilizing these uh, digital tools. For us, when we receive a new patient in our office, it's not a matter of saying that this patient is an ortho patient or a perio patient. The patient is a patient. We don't actually know what needs to be done. And unfortunately, technology until recently was only helping us after all decisions were already made. And it's, that's a waste of technology. We need technology to help us on the most important and most difficult part in our dental world, and that is designing and planning the case, making the decisions and analyzing risk assessments and understanding the timing and the sequence of the procedures that needs to be done. And technology is ready to help us on this adventure. So when we have an issue case, we don't know if it's ortho, orthognatic, perio, implants, or prosthetics. We need to digitalize this patient. We need to bring this patient into an interdisciplinary platform. And we need to brainstorm about the possibilities. And that's the other beautiful thing about technology. We can make all the mistakes and fix them in seconds differently than any other mistake that we do in dentistry. We usually say that the cheapest moment to make a mistake is in the computer before you even present the project to the patient. Every mistake done afterwards becomes more expensive. Not only financially expensive, but more emotionally expensive, functionally expensive, biologically expensive. So we can play with this patient with the possibilities in the computer. And that's another problem that we see from software, dental software nowadays, because the companies were not focused on giving us a platform for treatment planning. They were giving us platforms to fabricate final devices. So we had a couple of problems in digital dentistry until recently. Softwares were fragmented. Ortho was not integrated with orthognatic. That was not integrated with surgery. That was not integrated with restorative. That was not integrated with the face. There's impossible to treatment plan a case with fragmented softwares. They were not facially driven. They didn't help through the process of designing and planning. And there was a huge learning curve for us to actually learn all these softwares and invest money getting and buying all this technology. And that's why digital dentistry didn't happen. For us, what we need is a unite platform, somewhere that we can actually share our patients and document in a simple way, create simple sketches, and have technicians train on that to help dentists to take advantage without actually having to do themselves. So a way that you can actually design the smile with the face and go through this journey of experimenting different ways of treating the same case and brainstorming about the possibilities that are probably uh, the best to offer this patient. So I'm gonna utilize this case to show how this actually happens. So as we always do, the first step is always to plan the case from the face and we actually have to erase the teeth so they don't fool us. So every case for us, it's like a denture case. So we're gonna place this ideal denture, facially driven, and then through transparency, 
check the discrepancy between where we should be according to lip dynamics and face and where we are right now. And then we can start moving the patient through the different uh, pieces of the software. For example, we can bring the patient to the orthognatic part of the software and check if orthognatic makes sense, yes or no. What are the pros and cons? Does it make sense to offer this kind of procedure? Can we intrude this with uh, orthognatic surgery? Can we fix the midline with orthognatic surgery? How much is that movement? Is this possible? And share this possibility with our specialty specialists to see the options that this case uh, presents. And finally, on this specific case, only now bringing this project into the implant part to actually brainstorm about what can be done regarding the implants. So we see that we coming from the face, we move the whole arch, we can move the teeth with orthodontics, and then we can wax up the lowers against the future uppers and place the implants according to this crown position and only then check what happens with the bone. Do we have a better solution? Can we graft the situation? Is it better to change the implant to facilitate the surgery? These are all the questions that will show to us visually at this moment that we can start answering to create our plan. And once we have this plan done, we can then easily transfer these uh, information into real devices. So part of the platform can create models and restorations. Another part can create surgical models, surgical guides, implant provisionals and positioning trays, and another part can create orthognatic models and splints. So we can actually produce this in advance and send to the doctor so he can actually perform these steps all together. And this is another advantage of the digital workflow. You can shrink the treatment. You can make more than one appointment at one time. On this specific case, actually everything was done at the same time, from extractions, implant placements, uh, capturing the implants, provin provisionalizations, perio procedures, orthognatic surgery, lift force, segmentation, impaction, bonding the restorations, everything in one, one session. The digital world is ready to allow us to do this giving very, very interesting predictability and precision. So we can actually incorporate this on a daily basis. And the dentist here, the whole clinical team is actually focused on performing their procedure. They're not worried about learning and buying technology because the lab is the one, in our opinion, that should be supporting dentists on this kind of workflow. So, for us, smile design is definitely the primary principle of every single interdisciplinary modern treatment plan that we do. So the question here is how can we become better smile designers? Who is gonna be the smile designer of our team? Because the project will start from there. We don't treatment plan cases unless we already have a very solid smile design project. And for us, everything starts with the smile frame. The smile frame is something that is done based on simple videos, dynamic documentation, and then from these simple images we can start understanding what the face is suggesting. From this initial suggestion we can bring specific images into the beginning of the process and that's the 2D smile frame that we do that becomes 3D that can be then overlapped either in a diagnostic conventional wax-up, nowadays this will become a digital 3D wax-up that can be printed and can be test-drived in the patient's mouth and can be presented to the patient in a motivational way as well. Usually we do that before we even present the plan. So 2D becomes 3D, as other speakers said, there's still small distortions between 2D and 3D, it doesn't matter, it doesn't harm at all the project. We can see the facial integration, smile design is much more subjective, subjective than 0.001 precision. We're not talking about passive implant fit, we are talking about a facially driven smile design project, two completely different things. So we start from 2D, we become 3D, we 
create case acceptance, and then we incorporate this project into the interdisciplinary platform. I'm going to briefly spend some time on the smile frame, since this is the core of everything. We're going to analyze the video, and we're going to make eight basic decisions, where we want the midline, where we want the incisal edge, where we want the interdental proportion to be according to this phase, the intraproportion of the central, the gingival position, the papilla position, moving now to the comparison between where we are and where we suggest to be. Then going into the 12 o'clock, analyzing the volumes, where we are and where we want to be, and then the occlusal view, where we are and where we want to be. So this is the frontal smile frame. And nowadays, what we are doing is where we are incorporating a fourth aspect. And this is, for me, very, very, very special as a technician, the sagittal analysis. This is so powerful that I believe that in the near future, every good technician will become a cephalometric expert because there's so much information here that we can use and learn from orthodontists and orthognathic surgeons to actually plan better the position of our dentures, of our veneers, of our crowns and restorations. We can actually, as a technician, learn few specific information and bring this information into these photos and check if our wax up, our initial wax up is following these suggestions. So we can compare digitally our initial wax up with the cephalometric suggestion and we can fine tune and bring this information to make the final decision about where do we want the central incisor to be according to the face. Technology is ready. We are doing this every single day. We shouldn't do a denture in our lives, in my understanding, without being able to have this simple analysis and making a denture that is slightly even better for our patients. So what we are doing is that we are actually learning and sharing the basic cephalometric information that for me every restorative dentist and every uh, prostodontist and technician should have. Natural head position, how do we achieve this? How do we calibrate the photos from this perspective? The true vertical line, what kind of information this brings to us? What is the relationship within the front head and the incisal edge position of the central incisor? We can actually measure this with the simple profile picture. We can check our projects with this information and understand not only the buckle position but the incisal edge position. Then we can bring the very simple analysis of the occlusal plane into our wax up, incorporating this to the analysis of the video and understanding how to fine tune the smile curve, integrating this with lip dynamics. And finally, understanding the axis of the central. Super important to have a nice denture, to have a nice anterior restoration. So incorporating this information. And if we can get the cephalometric from the patient, we can even go further and integrate other measurements into our wax up to give to the doctor an even better initial project according to these measurements. So we've been incorporating this information into our design. So this is the full project. Frontal 12 o'clock occlusal and sagittal analysis all based on the video dynamic analysis that we do from the patient. Extremely simple. If everything can be done with a smartphone, a couple of lines, and you can have this incorporated into your uh, diagnostic wax up. So we are actually bringing two basic principles to Try to become a better smile designer. Learning from dentures that brings us amazing, beautiful information from the frontal perspective that will, uh, all the information that we have to control to design a wax rim and bringing this together with the cephalometric analysis. So we can combine these two worlds and become a real 3D facially driven uh, smile designer for our patients. And everything is real, is ready, to happen right now for us. This is not the future. Like Professor mentioned before, the future is definitely now. So 2D becomes 3D. We can present these images to the team. We can present these images to the patient. What is important that a 3D project can become a printed model. The printed model can be test drive in the patient's mouth very easily, and we can present this to the patient as a 
test drive phase as a motivational phase. We always work very hard as a technician to help dentists to educate patients. I believe technicians can be the best partner of dentists to actually increase case acceptance and create a documentation that can help dentists explain the case to the specialists and explain to the patient. So we usually work with three platforms, the motivational markup, a 2D presentation that we do for the dentist, and a cloud system where the dentist can actually search for this information in 3D and present this information to their patients. So always on this sequence, on the first, second appointment, we will first create this engagement, this motivational, emotional relationship, and then technically explain this to the patient utilizing visual communication. And again, digital technology is the only way to create this communication in a realistic daily way. Another example, when it comes to orthodontics, we can do the smile frame for the patient, we can even transform this into a simple simulation that's not the most important. For us, the most important is here. 2D becomes 3D, completely guided by the project, completely facially driven, integrated with lip dynamics. We can then have this project overlap into any kind of system. So look how interesting it is to be able to see your ideal project overlap with the existing position. Sometimes the teeth are far out, sometimes they are in, it doesn't matter. The white is where we want to be. And now for us it's very simple to start suggestion what kind of procedures we need to go through to make this happen. And I like very much the principle from Peter Dawson that talks about the three R's, that when we have a clear vision about where we are and where we want to be, we can think about should we reshape, relocate, or restore to make this project become reality. So as you see here, you can see the old way of doing digital orthodontic uh, projects simply moving teeth around according to intraoral references. We don't believe in that. We believe in facially driven dentistry. So on the right side, you can see completely different perspective when we can overlap the facially driven project and by transparency, move teeth in 3D, having 3D facially driven orthodontics on cases like this and have exactly the position to allow us for minimally invasive veneers, for example. And I remember when I used to work with Gallip, he was mentioning about orthodontics for restorative, but in the analog world, we were struggling to have this kind of predictability. In the digital world, it's super simple, because through aligners, and aligners for us is definitely the future of orthodontics, we can actually make this digital movement become reality with very big predictability. So we can take, and we should take advantage of aligners, because this is for us the future of orthodontics. And I'm not talking about moving teeth better with brain I'm talking about aligners is the only way to make a digital project become reality with predictability. And it's beautiful to see how aligner companies are improving their techniques to make this possible, to make this reality. So we are totally believing on the future of aligners because this is going to integrate with the interdisciplinary project. The other concept that I think is very interesting for us as technicians is to understand how the 2D smile frame will help us communicate with the doctors to treatment plan the case. And what we do is to classify every single case that comes to our lab. And we realize that every single case that comes to us can fit into one of these six groups. Type number one means the simple case, means the case that we don't need to change tooth position, gingival position, and the bite, meaning we just need to prep and bond the case. Type 2 means we need to change the gingiva and then restore. Type 3 means we need to change the bite and restore. 4 means we need to change the soft tissue, implants and bone and restore. Type 5, we need to move teeth and restore. And type 6, we need to move the whole arch and then restore. And this is very nice because when you look at the digital workflow, you can understand how to find solutions to create complete digital workflows for each one of these situations, from more complex to more simple. And what we want to do is actually 
to restore simple cases. We want to transform every single case into simple first and then go for final restorations. So our goal when we are dealing with the complex case is to go through this journey, understand the sequence and the procedures, transform this case into type one and then go for the finals. And it's very much easier to understand the process when we can classify these cases. So here, let's use this case as an example. We can see the 2D project becoming a 3D project, and this is the moment before we even touch the patient, before we even present the, pa the project to the patient, before we even sell the case. We're gonna brainstorm looking at this and looking at this to find the best treatment plan for this case. And this is a nice case to brainstorm because it involves almost everything. We can see that maybe we can improve our profile with orthognatic, yes or no, pros and cons. Does it make sense to go through a drastic situation like this? So maybe we skip orthodontics, but we think about or, or, uh, orthognatic, if we, think, we think about orthodontics. Definitely our orthodontic case that we need to move things around. We need to open space for implants. We need to extract the deciduous teeth that are still inside. So we can plan these implants according to this project. And then think about the process of changing the bite. And this is definitely a case that we need to change her bite. We need to open her bite. We need to fix her deep class two overbite, overjet. And then we can think about, of course, deprogramming her and bringing her to a better CR position. And then moving into the process of planning crown lengthen that she also needs and then planning the restorations to finish the case in the best way possible. So it's always on that direction. We always trying to find the most minimally invasive and most simple treatment to get the best result possible as close as possible to the initial project. And we can see here on this simple video the difference between orthodontic procedures without a facially driven project and an orthodontic procedure driven by a transparency that is the ideal facial project. So in green here, you see by transparency this project that was completely calibrated with the face. And with this green project in transparency, we can actually now start moving orthodontically the teeth to achieve the best soft tissue, the best function, and the best restorative solution for this patient. Very quickly here, I want to show the advantages of designing a case in the digital world when comparing with what I did so many years, the analog wax up. We can see the discrepancies that we can bring in the analog world and how on the digital world we can calibrate everything, always following the information that we have. Cephalometric measurements, understanding overbite, overjet, understanding how the ideal project is harming the actual bite, how can it, we combine function and biology into this aesthetic project. And comparing this design with this, an old school wax up, how much guessing we have here, how much little information we actually have to design these cases on this way. So we can then go through the process of finding the bite digitally, bringing this bite to the, to the computer and then designing the restorations, designing the lowers actually according to the uppers, creating the intercuspation and evaluating the occlusion, contact points, anterior guidance angle, overbite and overjet, everything before even touching the patient's teeth. So look how nice is able, we are able here to understand overbite, overjet of the diagnostic wax up and share this information with the dentist and see how his functional principles can fit into this project. So we can delete teeth, we can see the clearance, we can see the guidance, we can see by transparency, and we can evaluate if this project needs to be adapted or if this project is possible to be uh, achieved. Now when we get to a point where we find the bite, we know this is a safe and comfortable situation, we can either design a night guard to test drive this bite, or we can even transform this gap into transitional restorations. So we can actually perform this into the software and create bonded restorations or 
functional mock-ups that we can bond in the patient's mouth before we start prepping teeth and we can test drive this new vertical, this new relationship, this new facial integration. So this is basically solving the case in one shot and transforming a full mouth complex case into a simple case that can now be fixed by sextant or even treated by single tooth type of dentistry. So now at this moment, all days we used to go through this challenge of designing with wax and then only then going into digital. Nowadays everything is completely facially driven, designed in the 3D and then the final restorations are an identical copy of this initial project and we can then mill with the materials that we have in our hands. So just to finish and to summarize the thinking process of treatment planning for us utilizing this technology and actually this thinking process we use even on the analog world. We believe that the first step is to look at the face, understand lip dynamics and facial analysis from the frontal perspective, from the sagittal perspective, create a 3D ideal project with the face. And then with transparency compare the ideal project with the existing position of upper teeth and gum and trying to find the solutions to make this discrepancy disappear or reduce. At the same time, simultaneously, the other part of the team is working with function. And function means finding the best, most comfortable position of the mandible in relationship to the maxilla. It's not vertical, it's not occlusion. It's a joint position that is comfortable and safe based on TMJ and muscles. So when we find this position, we can bring this position together with the upper design and only then we should fine tune the vertical dimension. The vertical dimension will be fine tuned for our restorative and functional convenience, trying to be as minimally invasive as possible on the back and as functional as possible on the front, creating the guides and preserving the teeth and fine tuning, opening or closing this vertical according to this relationship to have the best, most comfortable situation and most convenient situation. And only then, as the fourth step, we will then jump into bringing the lower against the uppers, creating intercuspation, matching the lowers against the uppers. And it's interesting to see that as a technician, for many, many years, I was doing exactly the inverse way. I was starting from creating a wax up with maximum intercuspation and then trying to finalize the case in the most beautiful way possible with the face that I didn't know very well. So with this in mind, I hope I was able to summarize the thinking process that we share on interdisciplinary treatment planning and how the digital world is completely ready to help us right now to become better interdisciplinary treatment planners. Thank you very much for your time.